tour guides of Reddit. What's the worst thing a tourist has ever done under your supervision? About 15 years ago. I worked as a deckhand on a line of boats that took people out to Fort Sumter. The trip was about an hour each way. One day. We were about halfway there and two teenagers decided it would be fun to jump off and try to swim to shore. This is in Charleston Harbor. Which is a pretty solid tidal current. Lots of boat traffic. And probably more sharks than one would like to think about. We ended up having to perform a water rescue on them. Then continued onto the fort. With the coast guard coming and picking them up. All in all. An extreme act of stupidity. I used to do vineyard and garden tours for a pretty well known winery. I had a lady ask to see any Merlot vines we had so I walked her over and she proceeded to dump ash all over them and yell we love you nana. Rest in peace. Needless to say you are not allowed to dump human remains on food goods. I should mention the ashes came out of a gallon ziplock baggie. It was a Christmas themed one so maybe that makes it more tasteful. I'm a bush pilot in Alaska and occasionally do glacier air tours of my boss asks, I'm not a fan of doing tours. One day I'm doing a glacier tour and had probably 7 people on board and the dude sitting next to just looks at me and says I'm the captain now and yanks the plane 30 degrees to the right and then lets go and laughs saying he was just kidding. Used to be a tour guide at a primate sanctuary with a strict no touching policy. At the end of the tour there's a suspension bridge. Tourists go first. Guide goes last as per the rules. I always warn the tourists that the other side is the territory of a Hanuman Langer and he doesn't FCK around. Keep your distance etc. He doesn't attack people out of nowhere. But he likes showing his teeth and screaming. Which scares tourists. Anyway. One tour I get to the other side of the bridge. And a tourist got bitten. He says a monkey just bit him out of nowhere. Ask the other tourists. No he tried to fking pet the Hanuman. Was on a tour in New Orleans. Guy gets drunk and basically makes a fool of himself and slaps his partner. Everyone else on the tour is like a soho and not cool. Take a hike. GF leaves with him. Next morning they're all on the bus waiting to roll out to the next destination and we're not moving. 30 minutes later we're all getting pissed off. Then the couple get on the bus looking sheepish. By the next stop we learn. The drunk guy ran a bath at the hotel. Passed out and it flooded the bathroom. And four floors below into the hotel lobby. The hotel wouldn't let them leave without paying thousands of dollars. Karma for him. Not a tour guide. But was doing an English language camp for foreign kids. Took the kids on a day trip to London. Which involved going up the London Eye. While in the queue. One of the kids started shouting that he had a bomb in his bag and he was going to blow everyone up. Almost got all 20 kids in the group kicked out. On an open top tour bus in London. Woman tries to dangle her toddler over the railing. Then starts saying she's going to complain to my manager when I told her to stop. Caught her doing it again and company policy said that anyone endangering their kids like that was to be removed from the tour. So the driver had to come up and march her off. She still insisted she did nothing wrong. Like. She literally had the kid's feet on the side rail of the, moving, bus and was just holding him loosely round the waist. One low hanging tree branch. Of which there were many on the route. And that kid was gone. I was working on a tourist island in Australia when this man pulled out almost all the back feathers of a peacock because he wanted to keep one. He sneaked up behind it. And grabbed a huge handful and yanked them all out. He was immediately escorted off the island. The peacock had a huge bare patch and most of its beautiful feathers were gone. I used to work at a heritage site. It was an old military installation with a lot of remaining original structures, bunk beds, cafeteria equipment, computers etc. Dot. Every day it was a constant effort to remind people, read, kids, not to jump on the beds, not to slam doors open, not to punch every button like it owes them money. The absolute worst was a group of kids on a school trip. Within the first 10 minutes we're walking through the tech portion of the exhibit. Where we had a wall lined with Burroughs large systems machines. 
B5000s. All behind this little fence about waist high. I turn to demonstrate some of the pieces. And when I look back at the group one of them had jumped over the barrier. Opened one of the units and started pulling out handfuls of digital tape from the reels inside. I just about jumped on the kid when their teacher did just that. She jumped the barrier. Smacked the kid's hands and took him outside. I immediately ended the tour and had them all refunded. As I couldn't imagine what else could happen. Awfully nice of you to refund them after that. They took a big shti in front of the group. So. We tour through streets and parks and make it really clear that the toilets at the beginning of the tour are the only ones for the first 90 minutes of tour. We get to a park about 30 minutes into the tour. Not a big park mind you. It is basically a big roundabout with a swing set. Bench and two trees. I'm in the middle of my spiel in the park when I see a guy at the back of the group. Step away. Pull his pants down and squat on the grass. Of course I was stunned and lost my flow which had everyone looking around only to recoil in horror as this guy drops a log like it was nothing. He wasn't even ashamed. I work at a brewery tap room and take people on brewery tours. During fermentation CO2 is produced and excess comes out through a runoff pipe and into a water bucket. One of the attendees, who was being a pain and trying to be funny but nobody was laughing, asked me what the pipe was for. So I gladly explained. He then asked what would happen if he breathed it in. In disbelief of his stupidity I told him he would pass out damage his brain. He then proceeded to grab the pipe and take a breath. He was then ejected and barred. Some people are just beyond belief. Took a class of middle schoolers to a museum and one of my arsehole students dragged his hand across a 3000 year old Indian painting. Later on I found out the object was almost certainly a reproduction but I nearly died of rage on the spot. Did it. The student was with us on a 45 day placement for severe behavioral issues. He earned enough points in school to qualify for the field trip. Never again. Not me. My best friend's tour guide on an island off the Australian coast he saw one of the tour ignore the huge signs warning people not to go to the edge of the water. Predictably the tourist gets hit by a huge wave. Swept out to sea. I know it was the worst thing the tour guide ever saw because he and my best friend both went into the sea to rescue the tourist. And they both died. Funniest guy I ever met. Miss him most days. The tourist who caused it all? Predictably he survived. Pretty sure he doesn't feel too good about the whole thing. Tour guide at a university. We got a lot of guests that really, really don't want to be there. Mostly misbehaved kids from a poor area of the city. We toured at all times. Even during finals week. As many may know. Sound can travel oddly in or in lecture centers. Our lecture centers have windows around them. And like 6 kids thought it would be hilarious to smash on the windows. From the inside it sounds like gunshots are being shot from outside. Or at least muffle gunshots. Watched 100 plus students flee the classroom during their final exam. We got a lot of shti for that. It isn't easy corralling a group of 30 plus students. That's the chaperone's job. Friend of mine does tours of whiskey museums in Dublin. Someone took a shti in one of the exhibition rooms. Why is there always that one fka? I watched a man run up the side of the platform the winged victory statue is on in the Louvre and throw his arm around it for a photo. Security got him down pretty quickly. I'm shocked he actually made it up there. I actually had a very hard time with the Louvre because of shti like this. So many camera flashes at point blank. People constantly touching shti that really shouldn't be touched. Everywhere I looked there was someone being a said to something irreplaceable. I was in the part that was still set up like a palace and came into a room to find some dude holding a 500 year old Chinese tapestry up to his face and f king rubbing it between his fingers. I lost it on him a bit. Asking what the fck he was thinking. Why he would do something like that. And his only response was I wanted to see. And shrugging. Ultimately I trust the folks that put stuff on exhibits to have weighed the risks of this sort of moron's impact versus the value of sharing access with the world. But holy hell does it make my blood boil. I had a guest. 
snorkeling try and grab the tail of a barracuda as he swam up behind it. Luckily I was able to hit the guest with a dive fin from the boat to stop him before he got a hold. If he had grabbed on. I'm sure he would have been ripped to pieces by that fish. Couple of guys I used to play cricket with went on a school trip to Auschwitz and decided to steal a small pair of glasses and some buttons they found half buried in the ground. They were detained by Polish police while they were leaving the site. Hard to know what goes through people's heads sometimes. On the subject of Auschwitz. I worked with a dude whose go to badder story is that he snorted coke while walking around Auschwitz. I've probably heard him tell 25 people or so the same story and every person kind of looks at him like he's a fking piece of shti and then they try and change the subject. Not a tour guide but I guess you could say I work in the tourism industry. I work ground crew for a company that does helicopter tours. Number one rule for customers is don't walk under the tail boom. The rotor will kill you and IT will hurt. It's unbelievable how many people have a death wish out there. People see the fastest way to the other side of the helicopter and don't stop to think oh hey. That spinning blade may or may not slice my whole fking head off let's see how close we can get to it. Tour guide boat captain in the Caribbean. We had about 40 stroke 50 people on the boat. Got off. We would normally go feed swimming pigs which someone would get nipped from them from doing stupid tea, but nothing too serious. Well the next stop after that was another island where we would hand feed turtle. Sharks. And stingrays. So we would tell the people to hold it with the palm open and food in the middle for the stingrays and they would come over the top and take it out. The turtles and the sharks put it in the water holding it in the tips and when they are coming for it let go. Well of course. This dingus decided he would be tough and feed this baby shark. No longer than your forearm without letting go. Shark proceeds to bite his fingers. He screams and jumps up out of the water and flicks it off of his hand. Pearling one of his fingernails off in the process. So that's one I always remember. I used to give tours at my university. There was a group of middle schoolers I was giving a tour to, to show them why they should want to go college. Yatta yatta. There was this one kid who kept trying to sneak away and was whistling at just about every girl who walked by. Weird. Okay. Whatever. He thinks he's a big shot. Then a very attractive girl comes jogging by us. And he tried to grab her and starts air humping while he watches her run away from us. I was mortified. I ended the tour. I was done with him. The teachers didn't even care. That was probably the worst part. Didn't happen to me. But one of my company's tour guides was on a flight with a bunch of middle schoolers. One of the boys got caught jerking it. In his seat. Next to a girl who wasn't even from his school. Former white water rafting guide. There's a calmer section of the river people can. If they choose to. Hop out and swim through. They are wearing life jackets so you can just float through it. This woman decides she wants to try it and hops out. After she pops up she slowly tilts forward until just the back of her jacket is out of the water and she's completely still. After 5 or so seconds of this I start to realize this might not be intentional and paddle over and physically pick her head up above the water followed by her gasping for air. I haul her in the boat and ask what happened. She said she didn't know what to do as she never been submerged in water before. 1. Why are you on a white water rafting trip? 2. Why didn't your strategy involve moving your body? My cousin is a tourist guide and biologist. Most of his tours are in Africa. He instructed his group of 20-25 people including kids not to wear any type of earrings or collars especially shiny stuff since they were about to go into a thick forest to try to see a bunch of animals. This is very important because 20-25 make a lot of noise which makes wild animals run away or hide. It's even worse if they are wearing shiny stuff they can spot from far away. Okay so this woman complains. Decides to wear shiny earrings anyway. Cousin tells her to get rid of them or she ain't coming with the group so she obeys but puts them on a bit later. Some species of monkeys in that area love shiny stuff. They ripped the earrings from her ears. Edit. Okay I wasn't ready for the inbox nukes. Yes my username makes everyone cringe. 
Shaving your teeth is a truly enlightening experience. Make sure to sleep properly so you don't wake up too tired and end up picking your razor instead of your toothbrush when you brush shave your teeth. I was on a tour with my family in Cambodia and we visited Angkor Wat. Now as everyone knows. Angkor Wat is teeming with tourists day and night. There was a long line to climb the Bakken, basically the topmost tower. Wherein the steps are very steep. It was a hot day and when it was almost our turn. A middle aged man took two steps. Fell backward and started having a seizure. People came to his help immediately. However. One man who was also crowding around him did nothing but pull out his cell phone and start recording. Thankfully. Everyone noticed and started yelling at the guy to put that shit away. He acted like the victim though and he said he was just trying to help. What a twat. Edit. People are saying the guy was probably filming it to show paramedics but uh, the victim's family was there and if anyone had the right to collect evidence. It's them and B. Recording dude was grinning widely until he was called out so I seriously doubt he had good intentions despite his claims. I was giving a tour of my university to the mother of a potential student. She tried to recruit me into a popular pyramid scheme and then. When I tried to change the subject by asking what she did in her spare time. She told me about her conspiracy theories that she gives public talks on. They included the dangers of Wi-Fi. 5G. And chemtrails. And that the moon landings were faked by Stanley Kubrick. Who was shortly thereafter assassinated by the CIA and replaced by a clone. I cut the tour short. Felt pretty sorry for her daughter who appeared to think these theories were reasonable and had also been recruited into her mother's pyramid scheme at 17. Comma the moon landings were faked by Stanley Kubrick. NASA hired him to fake the landings. But he insisted on filming on location. Was on a tour of a small cave system somewhere in West Texas. It was really beautiful and right after the guide told us how long it took for all the stalagmites and stalactites to form she turned around to move on and some guy leaned way over and snaps off a small one and shoved it in his pocket. I was so surprised I just stared at him and he smiled and winked at me like we had really gotten away with something and I was a co-conspirator or something. I think I learned this from reddit. Give him a thumbs down. They always look startled. Then sad but no one has ever become confrontational. They usually slink off or avoid eye contact if they can't leave. I mostly do it to people who don't pick up their dog's tea. Most will awkwardly pretend they meant to wander back. We were in Australia. Visiting Uluru. There was a section where it was so sacred that photographs were not even permitted. I leave this couple alone to take in the scenery and I come back approx 7 minutes later to see them full blown naked fking the brains out of each other. TL. DR. Had a break. Couple started fking at sacred site. Saw a kid knock over a set of replica civil war rifles that were on display. And then his mom got mad at the tour guide for yelling at him. The kid and his mom were kicked off the civil war tour. I was a whitewater rafting guide and we had a trip of about 5 boats. One of the clients only brought nice high heel type shoes, not very high but those type of lady nice shoes. Not sure what to call them. We require shoes on the trip so that's what she wore. About an hour into the trip it was like 100 degrees so the guests start a water fight with their paddles and all of a sudden I hear this lady screaming stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I didn't come here to get wet. Full stop. On a white water rafting trip. Another guide later told me a little girl in his boat said. That's my mom. She is always like this. Guy peed on the side of an Omaha beach bunker. Not out of spite or something. He just didn't want to walk back to the porta potty. Started pissing on a piece of history. Obviously not the worst thing that'll be in this thread but certainly made the rest of our group turn to him and ask what in the absolute fck he was doing.